Hello, my name is Cynthia Chandler, and we are going to be presenting Moodle for Constructing Online Learning. Hi, my name is Scott Moss, and I will be co-presenting with Dr. Chandler. And you can see that there is a picture of me on the left. Uh, the Vokey, the avatar, is not me. It is a picture of one of our students that she's created. Uh, we also have contributions in this presentation by Michael Tillier, Tim Clifton, and the handsome gentleman to the right is Mr. Scott Moss. So once again, this is Moodle for Constructing Online Learning. We are going to be sharing best practices in Moodle by master's graduates in EdTech. So here are some of our session outcomes. We're going to learn a little about Moodle and why we're using it. We're going to see projects from master students and share best practices. We're going to make connections to learning theory and theory principles, as well as connections to instructional design. We're going to discuss what tools to use to embed, to create, and upload in Moodle to make your projects come alive. And if you want to continue the conversation, we have a back channel going on that is in today's meet called Moodle Palooza. And that's where you can contribute ideas, suggestions, and other information about Moodle. So before we actually get started with our presentation uh, and talk a little bit more about Moodle, I wanted to uh, introduce and give you a context of who we are and why we're using Moodle. Um, I am a associate professor at National University. I've been teaching online since uh, the end of 99, almost towards 2000. And I have uh, been using Moodle with students since 2007. So we've had a Moodle server for a very long time. And um, the students that we work with, we work with about 120 a year who take classes at National University and we embed uh, and access the Moodle course uh, as a place for them to practice uh, working in a digital environment. Scott, go ahead. OK. Um, well, what is, what is Moodle? Oh, my background is um, I teach. I'm an associate faculty at National University, which means I'm part time. But I've worked there since 1999 as well. And I've uh, worked with Cindy on these courses where the graduate students use Moodle. But I'm also a public school teacher in the San Diego Unified District. And we've used Moodle for our students for quite a few years. And it's been the dominant LMS in San Diego Unified for a while, although they are trying um, some other ones. But uh, Moodle is proving to be quite flexible and uh, useful at both uh, the K-12 and at the university level. Okay, thank you. It's always great to be working with practitioners. And I'm, uh, I've been working in higher ed uh, predominantly in, in my career. And I have worked with many school districts who have used Moodle. Uh, or curious about Moodle, but Moodle is a very, very open source web application for producing modular internet based courses. And these courses support a modern social constructionist pedagogy. So what does that mean? That means that it's a community, it's modular, meaning it's par pieces and parts, it's object oriented, meaning that behind the fence, when you look at the programming language of PHP, it is constructed in units. And Moodle has changed quite a bit through the years. Uh, we'll be showing you some examples of what it used to look like in our Moodle server and what some of the things our students have done. Um, but it talk about the flexibility uh, that is applied you know, there are over 68,000 registered sites. There are 7 million courses. 
And last count, there are 99 million enrollments in Moodle. So although there are different school districts around the United States uh, and community college districts and universities who've been using the tool, um, universally and across the world is a very uh, predominant um, tool because it is free and it is open source, which means a lot for especially developing countries. Is it a CMS? Is it a contact management system? Or is it a learning management system? What we need to know is that it is a place for constructing digital content and presenting that content. Um, and you can, one can argue that a content management system, uh, Moodle has professed that they are a content management system rather than an LMS. But I believe that it, that it really is both. So why did we select to use Moodle when there are so many other learning management systems, particularly those that are free or have a free account? Um, we wanted a place for our master students to be able to play, to be able to develop, to be able to share in a protected environment so that they could have guidance, coaching, and mentoring from Professor Moss and other adjunct faculty and myself um, so that we can give them guidance while they're constructing, while they're picking up the buckets of sand, and while they're digging away to try and dive into the best solution. We, of course, in the Masters of Science in Educational and Instructional Technology, apply the principles when we construct our modules in Moodle, is we apply the ADDIE principle. And the ADDIE principle in ADDIE design, no one really knows how that acronym got started, but it is a full process that can be applied not only to web construction, but also to many other types of instructional materials. So we start with analysis. Um, we um, evaluate, we do a needs assessment, we implement it, and then we actually evaluate again. And then we develop and design, or you can go uh, around the circle a couple of times, actually. And there's some interesting acronyms, as we know in education, of applying other instructional design principles. Um, most of which are in an incredible book, and it's Robin Williams. The author is Robin Williams, and there's another author that she writes with occasionally, and it's Williams and Tollette. And the book that we absolutely ha have embraced to design our Moodle courses is the Non-Designers Design Book. Now, it's Robin Williams, the female author, not the comedian. Just wanted to reiterate that. So you can see that there's some pretty fun acronyms here. We'll find out what C period, R period, A period, P period stands for, and K period, I period, S, S. We know that. Some of the other uh, design principles that we're going to refer to are embedding, um, also the importance of engagement and interactivity in a course. We'll talk about synchronicity and how important that is, and then, of course, talk about constructionism or constructivist uh, principles. So the first one is CRAP, and that is an instructional design that's used in design principles, and it stands for cont contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. And these principles can be applied to not only working in a Moodle course, but any other learning management system or web program, web design program for that matter. Many of these principles are also used in print materials or in other kinds of digital materials creations. So you might see a PowerPoint presentation that is applying these CRAP design principles. When looking at the contrast, the repetition, the alignment, and proximity, this is actually an older version of Moodle. This is Moodle 
uh, 2.0. And um, this student, Mr. Eric Frey, who is a full-time middle school biology teacher, used this version of Moodle. And you can see that, that it's the older version of Moodle is very compartmentalized, um, much more so than um, the newer versions. But there is an authoring mode or an administrative mode, an editing mode, as well as a student mode so that you can see and toggle back and forth. Now, Eric and his uh, creation of his, his class, which is a four-week class uh, in a blended environment, he was able to embed virtual worlds. He was able to embed simulations. On the top left, you see a very popular tool, which is Avoki. And also, there is a pod, uh, several pods to the right, where there are some upcoming events, which can be turned on or off, recent activity, cell vocabulary, which uses the tools that are built into Moodle, and also cell journey, which was an embedded video. Now we're moving on to a national board certified teacher, Mr. Tim Clifton, who also received his master's in ed tech. He's from rural Virginia. And I'm going to be taking the URL, and we're going to be clicking on the URL to hear exactly from Tim how he built his Moodle class, why he built his Moodle class. And he'll give us some information about working in the Moodle environment um, and how that met his needs uh, in his rural Virginia classroom. So I'm typing in the URL. And you can click on this URL, which is a tiny URL that's been compressed. And we're going to be accessing a Adobe Connect recording, which is a voice over IP tool very similar to CCC. Uh, confer. And we're going to be taking you to this Adobe Connect recording. And as a middle school teacher, Tim really looked at the consistency or the contrast, um, the repetition, the alignment and proximity in his work can see that it's very unencumbered. It's Hi. I'm Tim. OK. Um, he's going to introduce himself. He's going to, we're just going to spend a couple of minutes, because I wanted you to meet Tim and to look firsthand at his introduction to astronomy class. And then I'll show you a little bit about how instructional design principles and um, the uh, learning theory is supported in the construction of this project. So let's hear Tim. ideas about the Moodle course, why I use it to make started off with a vote any web tool tools that I think stimulate and engage students. I found out that there's so many that you have to be picky. I'm going to use though there'll be too many. It's not there won't be the other way around. And you have to look at your goals and decide what would best fit your needs. And, and most importantly, what would engage the uh, students that you are teaching. Just get a feel for the course. I started with an introduction video. And uh, five seconds of it here. I made this using Camtasia. Maybe turn the sound down here. and. I really encourage you to helpful to me. And I used it heavily in this Moodle course. Also, when you're bringing in videos to the Moodle course, I believe that embedding them is better than having the students pop away to YouTube to find them. So let's just take a break here and go on down. 
every week. I have four week units and I have an introductory video, then I have an overview of everything the students need to do, and then I go through a series of things ending in assessments and then challenges. And I'll explain that in a minute. Week two is the same as week one, similar. I made a class uh, blog on uh, my eCoach, and the kids can go there and tell me about what stars they see every week. We also have a weekly class forum where they can connect with each other and with me. Week three and week four should all look the same. For my web design of this Moodle course, I just use the uh, CRAP model. Contrast is basically black and white. Repetition is everything is the same. Um, alignment is left. And proximity, I have plenty of white space. To get the white space in between my major uh, weeks, and I didn't see other students do this, I just took a uh, announcement or uh, the simplest little add-on you get, and I put all dots in it and made them white. And so there's really dots there you can't see them, but it looks great. And uh, let me go on down here. I have some ideas for uh, making a great Moodle course. Here's some things I did that I think really helped. First of all, I looked at examples of other students' courses in my class and in other classes in National University and just looked what they had good, uh, picked their brains, looked at their Web 2.0 activities, and it helped very much. Plan to spend much time making mistakes if you're going to use Moodle. It's very robust. It's got so much you will never get it all. Don't even try. You just need to get what meets your needs and your goals and be happy with it and then change it and tweak as you need to later on. But uh, I, I spent so many hours just playing around to get this thing to where I have it now. Every time you have a problem, a great idea is to go to Google and just type the problem and make sure the word Moodle is in there. I never failed to find the answer. I couldn't get the news off. And I, I typed that in and it showed me how to do it. And if there were problems that couldn't be solved, it told me and I worked around it. Uh, another idea, you might need to go back to the YouTube tutorials from uh, it's 609 if you had it, and it's not just Moodle YouTube tutorials, and just see the, the very basics of how to get started. And you don't need all the advanced Moodle things to make a good Moodle course. You just need the basics, and then you start tweaking and playing. My concept of a good Moodle course is objectives first, and that would lead to a, a good storyboard from which I can spring and make a Moodle course. And I'd like to share that with you right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause now and connect back with you. And you can see that Tim not only is a master teacher, but also he really took his audience in mind when constructing his course. I'm going to show you a little bit of some of the planning tools. Once again, repeating what Tim said about consistency, repetition, alignment, and proximity. It's not cluttered. And oftentimes, there are too many click-throughs on a page, especially when we're creating content. He has very brief directions on what the students need to do. But typically, it is done with an introductory video and Tim talking. And in some cases, it's even Tim's dog talking. He uses a tool called Blabberize, where the dog introduces the, the uh, the unit as opposed to Mr. Clifton introducing. As all good, story, uh, all good stories go, using a storyboard to create content, especially e-learning content, is critical. This is using a tool called Inspiration that also has a Web 2.0 version. There are many versions of this type of online storyboard or graphic design program. One of the mapping tools that I wanted to share with you, and this is, this is one that uh, stems from the learning theory. There are uh, several authors and several theorists that, that we learn about um, that really gives us a real scholarly foundation into why we do things. We know that cool tools are wonderful, but applying the absorb, do, connect strategy 
of making e-learning by design by William Horton really was a great way for Tim to look at each section to make sure that not only was it grounded in learning theory, but there was a, a place to introduce information, a place for the students to play with that information, and um, a tangible outcome of how they were connecting with the material. We'll be publishing this work later this year. The next student Scott's going to go ahead and talk about, and I will go ahead and show you live what our NUSOE.org, our Moodle server, looks like. Uh, go ahead, Scott. Okay, thank you, uh, Cynthia. Um, before I start, I want to just piggyback on something uh, Cynthia said, and that is connecting the learning to theory. If you think about creating online learning, there are really three big issues you're looking at. Of course, you have the technology itself. Can you embed media? Can you create links? Can you deal with the technology portion? That seems in some ways to be the lowest level. And of course, there's the pedagogy. Is it good learning? Is it a good balance of you know, instruction, practice, collaboration, and so on? And finally, as, as Cynthia alluded to earlier, there's that page design. And they all overlap and they all connect. Okay, with poor page design or poor website design, the learning is compromised. So uh, these are all skills that are well addressed in Moodle, and these examples uh, provide, uh, provide good illustrations of a good use of all three put together, especially this one uh, from Diana Haven. So Diana is not in K-12, if I uh, remember correctly. She's in uh, the medical field, but uh, good learning is good learning and good teaching is good teaching. So um, she uses uh, the various different modules of Moodle, which keep um, expanding and improving all the time. Uh, within Moodle, you're able to embed media, such as YouTube videos, Google Forms, images, and so on. Anything that generates an embed code, you can uh, put within the Moodle page. Also, you can certainly embed uh, graphics and uh, PDF files and so on. Also, the, uh, there's a big focus on gamification, making uh, learning like a game where it's goal directed and there are rewards for uh, achieving certain uh, goals. Uh, she has some of that. And that good old, I'm not even going to say it, the CRAP design, uh, as far as the look and feel of the site, is very inviting and lends itself to uh, students knowing where to go and knowing what to do. Okay. So here's part of her, uh, her site here, and there are uh, buttons here. And Moodle lets you create buttons. And in this module is the uh, lesson where you can have branching and so forth. So if student answers a certain way, if they need more help, they can, it will branch to a page that will give them more help and so on. So um, it allows for self-guided learning and also adaptive learning. So in this, this module, um, this, this is an example. You can see there's a video. This is a screenshot of her uh, of a page here uh, from Moodle where you can um, there is a video embedded as you can see that one that says Kodu on it. And uh, there's some more of the buttons, um, as I said, allowing for interactivity and uh, it being adaptive. So that's very powerful. Uh, the lesson module in Moodle is actually one of the more powerful and robust robust modules. Uh, of all of Moodle because it allows you that flexibility to instead of just presenting content in a linear fashion, you can um, make it adaptive, interactive, branching, and so on. Um, as far as um, this module, uh, this module has a lot with, in common with the other modules. Uh, you can make things graded or ungraded. And the grading uh, features of Moodle are uh, powerful, and each uh, subsequent version seems to add more power to the grading. Um, you can add questions, and once again, those tend to be the ones that are branching. So depending on the response, uh, the next page will be uh, based on the initial response. So if you need a review, for example, uh, you could uh, build that into your uh, lesson. You can allow for question retakes, and you can set the number of retakes that are available. You can put in specific feedback. 
So if they get an answer wrong, you can guide them a little bit or encourage them or whatever feedback you would like. Okay? And it also allows other students to review. And this is a newer feature of Moodle where other students can review uh, each other's work. And now some of them have that uh, star system or the rating system. So you could even put stars and that kind of a thing onto a, uh, uh, your classmates' work. Um, and before we go on to Michael Tillier's project, which is using uh, the, uh, a more recent version of Moodle, um, wanted to talk about the new web version. Well, actually, it's all the way up to 2.7. Uh, but in 2.5.5, I believe is the exact version, uh, we are able to turn on a lot of gamification features, including what Scott described to you, which was the star rating. or the, It's more of a social media application that is embedded now into the latest version of Moodle. Uh, but there's also a badging system. And there are many different plugins and add-ons that the Moodle community, now once again, you know, 9,000 other instructors, I'm sorry, 9 million other instructors around the world um, who are using Moodle, some of them have PHP experience and they share those tools, those plugins, those add ins very readily and openly. So now Scott's going to tell you a little bit about uh, another course and um, with Michael Tillier. Uh, Michael's course is really uh, exemplary, and one of the great things about it, first of all, he's a kindergarten teacher, and he was uh, focused on integrating mobile technology with very young students, which, as you uh, might imagine, is, is quite a challenge. And his, uh, his course is an excellent example of a lot of the things that we have been talking about so far. And if you look at this, uh, the first screen, for example, uh, great, uh, you know, nice, clean image and so forth. Okay. Um, one of the things that will certainly come up as you're creating any kind of online learning is synchronous versus asynchronous, meaning do you do things in uh, real time or um, asynchronously not in real time. Typically, you'll do things asynchronously with discussion boards and assignments where a person does not have to be in a certain place at a certain time. But Moodle does have a chat feature, which means you can do a real live uh, chats uh, online. So there may be certain situations where that is, uh, that is best for what you're trying to do, even if it's just an introductory session to, for students to get to know each other and get to know the instructor. Okay, so here again, here, here are the uh, examples of synchronous versus asynchronous uh, learners and instructors present at the same time. And there's been a lot written, uh, too much for this presentation, but a lot written about the advantages and disadvantages of synchronous versus asynchronous and when you should use which. But um, with asynchronous learning, of course, you've got the discussion board. And mo typically, the majority of online learning uh, that I'm aware of is asynchronous. And synchronous is used uh, in spots where it tends to be very uh, necessary. One thing I'll say just from my personal experience and professional experience is there's a social aspect to synchronous uh, connections. And if you have video, for example, being able to see and hear the instructor, it means a lot to a lot of, a lot of people and helps people feel that connection that's not to be underestimated. You know, very often you think, well, this content that we're getting in the synchronous environment, we could just get it online, we could just post it. But I think to have some synchronous activities can really help uh, build that learning community. Okay. And here's some information about that on uh, this slide. Um, and, okay, and we're moving on to embedding. Okay. So embedding is a very, very powerful aspect of Moodle and many LMSs. And here, if you see on this slide, on the left side is a Vokey. If you're not familiar with Vokey, this is a talking avatar that you can customize how it looks and what it says. And once you create one of these, it generates an embed code, which can then go inside of a Moodle course, for example. So if you wanted to have a talking uh, ambassador, if you will, or uh, there are a lot of applications for Vokey, but it is pretty, uh, 
it's pretty fun. If you do have students doing it, whether they're K-12 or university students, uh, they can kind of get a little distracted and lost in Voki because it is so much fun. They have lots of different um, avatars, including Santa Claus and animals and all kinds of things. But there, there's a lot of uh, great applications. And since a lot of online learning still is very text-based, it does break things up and make things more exciting for the learner to have those, uh, those Vokis. Uh, the second thing you see on this uh, slide is the Google Form. I, I hope you are familiar with Google Forms. And uh, when you create a Google Form, uh, when people fill it out, the data goes right into a Google Sheet or a Google Spreadsheet. And when you create a Google Form, you are able to share it in many ways through email, through a link, but also it will generate an embed code. So you can take that embed code and instead of just linking to that form, you can embed it right inside of uh, a course. And uh, going on down the line, Prezi is, if you're not familiar with Prezi, it's, it's kind of an online PowerPoint-like tool. It's got a little more motion uh, to it than PowerPoint does. And uh, that also generates embed codes, which can be put inside a Moodle course. And finally, uh, YouTube. If you go to YouTube, uh, almost I think every video has, uh, will generate an embed code. And so if you want to embed videos right with inside your Moodle course, uh, you can do that. Now when you embed something, you are actually getting it from that site. So if for some reason someone were to take down a YouTube video, uh, for example, from a certain uh, site, then that would not show up in your class because basically what it's doing is looking at that site, grabbing the video and putting it in your course. So when you embed something, you want to be sure that it's going to stay where it was where it, when you found it. And here is uh, JR, uh, <laughs> uh, JR Ginex Arinian. Did I say that right or is it Ginex? Um, he'll, be, he'll be very mad at me for getting this wrong. Um, JR is an awesome high school chemistry teacher. He is also a Google certified teacher and one of those uh, educational technology presenters you see at conferences who is just on fire in a good way. He, just, he, he has a lot of innovative ideas and he, he's, uh, he's very happy to share them. And there's his contact information there if you have more specific questions for him. Let's take a look at what he's done. So here's some Moodle do's. Um, Moodle do, that sounds like a number. Uh, do encourage students to learn together and share Moodle-based experiences. Okay, so students can create their own discussion boards, their own chats, and so on, and there are many, many different ways to collaborate. Um, be security conscious. You, as a Moodle instructor, you have lots of control over who can access your course and who can't. You can allow guest access, you can allow password access, and so on. But um, we tend to take those things for granted uh, in general about uh, people getting into a course and messing things up. Um, start small but think big. Very often students who are new to Moodle are intimidated by it. But uh, again, as Cynthia mentioned, it can be like a sandbox where you can play. So they can try to create things. If they don't like it, they can delete it and so on. And, uh, but once they get going on it, they can, they can really um, come up with some great instruction. And kind of connected with that is, and maybe a, a much bigger issue, is online learning is just not traditional learning slapped on the web. We want to take advantage of the power of the technology um, of Moodle and other online learning. So there's different ways of thinking about that. Save the work, of course, at the bottom of every Moodle page when you're creating is a uh, save button or save and display or save and return to course. And you, very often what you may want to do if you're typing up a web page in Moodle is type it in Word and then paste it into Moodle. Because if you t type a lot of text, as in any web-based system, if something goes wrong, the computer freezes, uh, you will have lost your work. So uh, saving is important. And um, there are logs as far as um, showing your progress and showing how things work. And, um, and enter summaries of your resources. You know, share and share alike, right? And there are some, there's a link at the bottom here, uh, the Moodle Docs community resources. As Cynthia said, 
Moodle is a large community, as in most open source technologies. There are people who are real creators who create modules and plugins and so on to extend the capabilities of, of Moodle. One of the other do's is, uh, once again, applying this social constructivist uh, theoretical application, and that is that learn from others, be engaged in learning, and be engaged in active learning. You enroll, you can enroll in a MOOC, which is a massive online open course. There is a Moodle MOOC that will be um, up and running uh, soon, and all you have to do is Google Moodle MOOC. So I just wanted to share that little tip and trick. Um, the Moodle documentation is is uh, at the Moodle site, the Moodle.org site, and every time you need to have a just-in-time learning tool, Moodle will allow you to click on the page, and it'll go directly to your uh, your Q and A or any of your other troubleshooting needs that you need when you are constructing Moodle resources. Speaking of resources, um, Scott, do you want to tell them a little bit about your conference here? And um, I won't click on it, but please do click on this when you're running through our presentation. Um, these are, yeah, these are, I mean, I, I, um, I'm a Google certified teacher. I um, present on a variety of um, resources, including Moodle, also iPads. I'm very focused on something called Scratch, which is programming for students, Google technologies, and basically the meaningful integration of technology at different levels. I've been fortunate enough to work at preschool through university. I've been an aide, a teacher, an administrator at county and district levels. So uh, having all those perspectives, I think, helps me address uh, different needs of different audiences. So I'll that link will take you to some of the resources that I've created. And I believe my email is uh, on this uh, presentation somewhere. So if you have any specific questions, uh, feel free to, to contact me. And moving forward into the 21st century partnership skills and, and many of, of the skills that, that we're embedding in our applied learning courses is making sure that we have the the three C's or the four C's. And so I've created a communication and collaboration cafe that you can take a look at um, later. We do have a Moodle website that I just wanted to show you very quickly as we wind up our presentation with you today. This is our Moodle site. You can see that it's very, uh, very clean. It's not cluttered. And we're adding uh, to the conversation all the time in all of these different courses that, that we're, we're teaching uh, since our new upgrade to 2.5.5. Here's Tim Clifton's actual course. His Vokey is being loaded. And many other courses that are constructed as a, an artifact or a master's project for our programs. A variety of, of topics, oceanography, playwriting, digital photography, multimedia media design, um, a unit on American Indians, social studies in the manifest destiny, and many, many more. So I encourage you to take a look at Moodle as one robust tool to construct knowledge, construct meaning, as well as to integrate technology throughout the curriculum. I want to thank you all for attending this virtual presentation, and we look forward to seeing you at the OTC Conference 2014. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you.